Welcome everybody to IT Pro TV. I'm your host, Don Pazette, joined in studio today by Mr. Daniel Lowry, and we have a special segment because Daniel has uh, kind of worked on a little, a little side project here yeah, on totally. creating a pen testing report. And I know when I first heard about this, I thought, oh wow, a special segment on paperwork. <laughs> this sounds great. I thought it sounded more <laughs> exciting than that, but. Yeah, this he's kind of right. <laughs> this is lame. So, so Daniel, th this isn't just regular paperwork, though, right? No, this is a, a pen testing incident report? Cor correct. So when somebody gets uh, hired at, or contracted to be a, a pen tester, either for a company or individually as just a, a regular contractor, they ultimately are selling a product to a customer, right? The customer wants to find out what their vulnerabilities are, where they lie, how exposed they are, what's their threat uh, model look like all that other good stuff. So they'll hire pen testers to come in and see and act as if, right, they were offensively going after them and then write that into a report so that they can read it and learn all those good things. It, it's, it's not something that gets talked about a whole lot in the security community, specifically as pen testers. I was joking with Don saying, when they're recruiting you for this and say, hey, don't you want to be the hacker? You could be, Don said, you could be Mr. Robot. Yeah. 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 But you also have to do a mountain of paperwork. This is a part of that, but it's, it's one of the most important pieces of that puzzle because it is the end product that you ultimately give over to your clients. Yeah, what we see on TV, what we see in the movies, a lot of that's sensationalized a good bit. And while pen testers are actively getting out there and trying to penetrate a network, once they're done, that's only half the job. They now have to turn all of that into various findings reports that they right. can share with the customer. Or, or if you're you know, testing inside of your own company, if you're just doing vulnerability scanning, you have to generate reports so that people know what to work on. They know how to fix the problem. They know how you were able to leverage that exploit and measure the severity of it, right? So this right. is all a part of that process. Now, Daniel, I know I've had to look at a handful of these reports over the years. When you're drafting one, what are some of the key components that you put in there? Yeah, there are definitely some uh, key aspects to the report that should be in, as far as what I've seen from the community and the industry at large. This is going to be things like the synopsis, an executive summary. you got to remember the fact that this report is probably not going to just see the eyes of some IT tech out there or somebody that's on the defensive team. It's probably going to see C-level eyes. And they need to be able to understand what their risk is. And if you can't write to that or give them something that they can sink their teeth into, they're not going to see a lot of value in that, and therefore you're going to lose some business. So you always want to make sure that you write that and give them an executive summary. A couple other things, what your findings overview were. Don't go into great detail, but just here are the things that I have found. Here are some possible mitigations, another great thing you probably want to add to that report. And then you're going to have the bulk of the report itself, which are the actual findings and the step-by-step -step walkthrough so that the security team for that organization would be able to follow your steps, recreate what you've done, and see if those vulnerabilities were true and how they could start to mitigate that stuff. Now, I know for people who are interested in seeing one of these reports, they can click the download link on this page and, and have access to it, but can you show us some of the details of your report right here in our video? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I actually got it open up right here in my little window. Now, I created this using Microsoft Word. One of the th reasons I did this was I wanted to prove to myself and to others that you could create this using standard Office type products. This is just Microsoft Word. Uh, I, I will full disclosure, Chandler created the front end graphic for this thing. He made it I, pretty. Could, I could have done this. I think you could have done this. Not a big lift, but I was time crunched. So I'll let Chandler <laughs> do it for me. That's what he does for a living. Um, I have a nice cover sheet. That kind of lets everybody know what's going on. Cover sheet's very nice. Table of contents, also an extremely nice feature for your reports, especially if they're going to be delivered electronically. People can click on and go right to the, the portion of it that is pertinent to them. And you'll notice I have an executive summary, synopsis, and the final report. Inside of that, we see methodology, information gathering, enumeration, vulnerability assessment, and exploitation, right? As we move down in here, this is one of the most important pieces of this, which is this executive summary. The people that have hired you, that own the company, the CEOs, Don, we're fortunate that one of our founding members is extremely tech savvy. He can look at this stuff, understand what's going on. Tim, our other co-founder, probably not as much as Don. Right? And that's no slight to him, that's not his business. So coming up with a very good executive summary, typos removed, grammatical errors should be removed, 
If you see a squiggly little red line under something, that means you should look at this and make sure that you've spelled it correctly because it shows professionalism. And a big challenge here is this part is supposed to be human readable, right? To people who are not pen testers or not even IT, right? I, I, I leveraged something called the Eisenhower methodology of delegating, which is if I can give work to other people, I need to do that because I, I have enough <laughs> I of my like own that. work. I like that. So uh, I might not even read the whole report. I might just read this executive summary. So it needs to communicate enough to me to understand, one, how bad the situation is, and two, whose problem it is, right? Who am I going to give this hot potato to to fix so they can take care of it? So this has got to be plain and simple English, not crazy advanced words. But that's where that stops, right? Because afterwards, now we do have to start getting into more complexity. That's correct. We're going to continue a little bit of that uh, kind of plain English speak when it comes to things like the findings overview. We need to let them know, here are the things that we have found, but not use too much technical jargon to confuse or confound them, right? So you're going to want to put that stuff in there. Uh, recommendations or mitigations, uh, sometimes you'll see this section as, what could they do that you've known uh, as far as what you found to start mitigating these issues? And again, using more common type of uh, verbiage. This is something that is highly recommended that you put in. This is a severity scale. How do I know how critical this is? What is the risk to each one of the findings that you've discovered. And I've seen multiple different ways. A lot of people like use iconography. That was a little outside of my scope. So I just use color coding and words, uh, verbiage to uh, convey that information with critical, high, medium, low, and informational types of findings. So I will attach that to each one of the findings that I have discovered or that I include in my report. And this may vary uh, from report to report. And you do have to be careful here because the, the terminology you choose can actually create confusion. I know I, I got a pen test report a few years back where they had their own prioritization oh, scale. Yeah. And so I couldn't match that up to my company's scale. Like I, it, what they consider severe might not be what we consider severe. And so that's something that has to get negotiated as part of the contract of hiring a pen tester to make sure things are communicated in the right language. Otherwise you end up going down the wrong track. Don, we should have you do a, a video on contracting pen testers and see what that looks like. It's a lot fun. of paperwork there too, right? <laughs> All right, let's keep on moving. Uh, down below, now we get to the actual meat and potatoes of this, the final report itself. This is gonna include things like the methodologies that were used, um, information gathering. A lot of times we're like kind of hearkening back to the scope during that initial phase of the hiring process, the contracting process. But, you know, these are the machines that I were testing and these are the ones that I found vulnerabilities against. And then, of course, the enumeration phase, you start to see I'm using screenshots here. I have very detailed annotized uh, screenshots letting you know this was the command in, in green and I try to keep consistent throughout the report. Consistency is key. If I start mixing and matching or doing different things, people are going to get confused. We want confusion down to a minimum. So anybody that is reading this should be able to follow along without any problem. But now you're seeing the same kind of thing here. I'm using Nmap. These are the things that were important or bolded in red or annotized in red. And then of course, a little more information, verifying everything. Other things that I'm doing here during the report, I know I'm not just taking screenshots, I'm not just annotating, like th this is the important piece, but I'm telling a narrative. This is how I went through this. This is what led me to think this and what led me to think that. Gives more insight to the people that are trying to mitigate against these vulnerabilities so they can understand, oh, well, we just, we never thought about that because we don't do that. or our mentality or philosophy in our business place is of such that we never would have gone down that road. So getting a fresh set of eyes. So always try to inform your customer using a narrative, and of course using good grammar and spell checking and doing all those things, extremely important. Can't tell you how many times I've heard uh, talks and things about this saying, we need to do a better job of creating reports because that is the final product that we're giving to our customers. And helping people understand how you pulled this off is going to help them determine, one, how to fix it, right? Because if it took you 10 steps to get there, in theory, that's 10 different places they could fix the problem to stop this from being an issue. But also it helps them to understand the severity, like how realistic is it that somebody pulls this off? If you read about all this crazy stuff they had to do, like they had to have Tom Cruise dangling from the ceiling by <laughs> ropes and all that to pull off. As you do. It's really not you know that big of a deal to worry about it but if somebody walks right in through a you know something exposed to the internet and you see how easy it is that builds up that sense of urgency yeah and, and that, those are great points you want to give them that information in a way that's digestible and understandable all goes back to that so once we get through this thing again we're, we're just kind of going through this was 
every step. This is a part of the process as you're doing a pen search report. You don't want to have to go back and rehack everything. So you should be taking screenshots and uh, good notes as you're doing your penetration test. But once I've got all the information, I just have to compile it in a way that makes absolute sense. And then of course, this is the vulnerability assessment part. Here's where I have found vulnerability. You can see the vulnerability that was exploited was a SQL injection. It explains what SQL injection is. Again, for maybe somebody that might not be in the know, you do have Tom and Sally IT person out there that might be the security personnel for a small or mid-sized business. And they're not quite up to speed on these things and yet it's still their job. So helping them along. And of course that's knowing your audience as well. If you know that they're, if you're doing this for Google, you could probably throw a bit more heavy jargon or leave some explanation out. But I like to add that stuff in there and then provide links to, if you need to understand more about this, if you need to learn more about that, you go straight to IT Pro TV. We teach you all about that stuff, right? <laughs> or there's some great web links out there uh, that's available as well. And of course, that, that really important severity of critical, letting them know we need to get at this as soon as humanly possible. Here are the steps that I've taken. Sometimes I will call this out so they can copy and paste instead of showing a screenshot. That can be super helpful for the blue team or defensive team that's trying to mitigate these things. And then of course, more screenshots of verifying what was done and supplying that proof of concept of what you did actually worked. It wasn't just, I'm pretty sure there's a SQL injection there. You should check that out. Uh, I wanna, wanna leave that kind of vagary uh, to the side. I tell you, the developers really appreciate this stuff because when they go in to fix the problem, they need to verify that it's actually fixed, mm -hmm. right? So if you've given them the step-by-step -step of how you can recreate this, this exploit, they can now use that to recreate to test to make sure they've actually fixed it. Yeah. All right, let's, this is quite, kind of a lengthy thing. It's quite a few pages, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start scrolling down a bit because we got a couple of, of more things to go. Here's the exploitation phase of this. Now that I've found the vulnerability, I've assessed that it is a critical vulnerability. How would I actually go about exploiting this? Some people also add a post-exploitation. I kind of rolled that up into one instead of breaking out into two. Again, I think this is a season to taste kind of thing. I'm seeing more reports that I was looking at as far as sample reports go, adding that post-exploitation, breaking them out. So in the future, I would probably go that route myself because ultimately I think we want to get to where everybody's kind of uh, consistent. So uh, walking through those steps, giving that information. And then as we get close to the bottom, I know everybody's getting sick <laughs> watching this go. It should start getting us to the last section there. There's the Etsy password file. There's me getting roots. That's always a fun day at the, at the office, right? Hey, I, I smoked this thing, popped a good shell, and I was able to exfiltrate sensitive data. And now we're coming to like other issues, it's something I tacked onto the end. You see this a lot as well. Also see things like an appendix where if your scans or reports that you used with other tools were just too lengthy to throw into the report. You can add them as an appendix, so they can go and look at those as they uh, deem necessary. But here I just added some other issues and one of the other things, and gave them some severity scale. This one has a severity of low because you already had to have exploited the box to, to find this information out. And then house cleaning, I like adding house cleaning. Let the, let the customer know we are trying to take care of you that we're not leaving around a bunch of exploits lurking in your, and hey, we, we did our job, here's your report. We undid all the things we've done, and you should pretty much see the same environment that you saw when we started this thing, and you should be in the same boat. Plus, here are some vulnerabilities you might want to assess, and you can get to work on that. But that's my penetration test report. This Anybody can take this, take a look at it, change, modify, uh, learn from it. I thought it was a great learning experience. It's a great way to get actual hands-on experience so that you can put this in GitHub or do something like that, show a, a possible employer hey, I know what I'm doing, and it will look professional. Here's an example of what that looks like. Now, Daniel, your example, I mean, it's pretty detailed. It's a long report, yeah. it's 28 pages. Uh, you had a lot of standardized terminology in there. Is the entire forum like a standard, or is it pretty much just created to your taste? Yeah, great question. When I started the whole thing, it was me going off of things that I had experienced and seen, just basically my experience. But then I thought, man, there's got to be some standardization for this. I did look that up, and lo and behold, we do have a website right here, which is pentest-standard.org showing you what a standard report should look like, giving you all the bits and pieces that could go along and in a standardized format. You'll see in here we've got uh, background, of course there's the severity scale, always want to add that in if you possibly can, and going on with all the different um, uh, levels that we saw inside of my report. This will probably have a bit more detail on mine, so the next one I write, I'm going to try to make it 
as close to this standardized documentation as possible so that everyone has that consistency. Yeah, so it's not like a, a template that you download, but right. at the same time, they do give you, here's the elements people Correct. are expecting to have in those reports. Yeah. All right, well, for you, the viewers out there, uh, hopefully you enjoyed our, our bureaucratic paperwork <laughs> of an episode here, but uh, if you'd like to get a copy of Daniel's finding report there, it's actually available right here on the webpage. If you just click on the download link over there, uh, I believe it's below me, it might be beside me, but uh, <laughs> click on they that put it link, everywhere. <laughs> and you get a chance to download it. You can read through it. It is lengthy, but it is a great demonstration of exactly how those findings should be reported. If you're a pen tester, it's a great tool to learn how to write reports yourself. If you are just a regular organization, it's a great way to see what you should be expecting of your pen testers when they file their final report. When you pay them money to do scans, this is the type of, of labor you should expect to get out of them. All right, well, Daniel, any parting words for our viewers? Uh, just uh, if you're wondering how I got this, I just downloaded a vulnerable machine from VulnHub, hacked it, and then instead of writing up like a CTF report, I did an actual pen test report because I thought that would give all of us a little more value. But there you go. You can do this as well. There's nothing stopping you. I highly recommend that you engage in this pro process to get that experience hands-on. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. And remember, be sure to click that download link. You get a copy of that report in PDF form right now. A uh, really helpful way to structure your own finding report. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm Don Pazette. I'm Daniel Lowry. And we'll see you next time.